What's poppin' T Squad? It's your girl Keisha. I'm here with tonight's All T All Shade, Real Housewives of Atlanta, season 13, episode one review. So the girls are back for another season. Disclaimer, we have to go through this every season for you crazy bitches. <laughs> These are just my opinions. This is a reality show. These girls get paid to argue, fuss and fight over dinner and lunch at restaurants, okay? I don't give a fuck about these hoes. Neither should you. This is a review. You cannot agree with me. I don't care. I'm not going to lose any sleep or hair because I don't have any. Keep it cute or keep it mute. The block button is hot. The block is hot. The block is hot. Hot, hot. And I hate that I have to do this every year, but these bitches are crazy. <laughs> Some of you bitches are nuts. Some of you bitches act like y'all besties with these hoes. And don't know how to separate reality from reality television. Okay? Love you. Let's get it started. So, the season starts off with the ladies in their confessionals talking about the state of the world with coronavirus and the murder of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. You know, this year has been a do Z. We have had one of the worst years that I can think of since I've been alive on this earth. But it also has taught us a lot. Um, it's taught us perseverance, strength. It taught us to slow things down, to focus on what really matters, which is our loved ones, our families, our health. Um, and to not just care about the superficial things in life. So Candy cries talking about, you know, having a black son and how to navigate that in this world that we live in where the police are supposed to protect us, but you know, We've seen on so many occasions where, you know, they harm us, you know, and I have the same fears, not only <clears throat> for my son, but for myself now <clears throat> after what happened to Breonna Taylor. And I know this is a channel where I don't get really political and talk about, you know, everyday events. But, um, you know, I have one child, my son, he'll be 21 years old today right now he just turned 21 years old thank you god thank you jesus and my son is chocolate he has locks in his hair he's a big stocky dude you know what i'm saying and i fear for his safety every day because he looks a certain way to the general public aka white people they might assume that he might be a thug or whatever but he's the nicest boy you will ever meet Great student, college educated, never had a fight in his whole life, doesn't drink, doesn't smoke. He's a good young man, you know what I'm saying? But I fear for him because of the color of his skin and because of the way he dresses and because of the way his hair is. And then not only that, I have to fear for his safety, but now I have to fear for my own as a woman where I can be sleeping in my bed at night and somebody mistakenly come up in my shit and just start shooting and kill me. You know what I'm saying? Like the world that we live in is just a fucked up place and, you know, it, it, weighs heavily on me, you know, it gives my anxiety even more angst, you know, and it's just sad that we have to worry about just existing in this world just because of the color of our skin. And it's just really a fucked up, it's just a fucked up state that we live in. And I pray that one day it gets better. I really honestly does. So Portia discusses peacefully protesting and, you know, how while she was out there, the police were bombing them with gas bombs and stuff and they had to run for safety. You know, I salute everybody who went out there and protested. I'm going to be honest with you. I just didn't have it in me. I'm too scary. Like, mm -mm. but I uh, commend anybody who got out there and protested over the summer who's still protesting now. Um, it's good to see Portia in this new light. And following her grandfather's legacy, you know, I've had my fair share of words for words for Portia, you know, in the past, she has driven me, driven me nuts, child. She has driven me to drink. Um, I have never really seen it for Portia because a lot of her ways, but I can give credit where credit is due. She has stepped up in a major way. I'm happy to see her drop this ditzy persona of hers that may well just be her personality or part of her personality, but it's so good to see her talk articulately and to put herself out there on the front line and fight for something that, you know, not only helps her, but helps the world. So I got to give it to her. She did the damn thing. 
kudos to Portia. Um, loved Portia's opener look. They got a new opener this season. The ladies were able to wear different outfits. Portia is in the middle holding the center peach. Loved her look the most with the new opener. Second, I will have to give it to Kenya. Candy and Cynthia's look were pretty stale. It was ordinary, basic, and new girl Drew Sedora's look was just, it was giving me too much. Too big of her, the ruffle, it was just too much for me. Um, so Cynthia is at Lake Bailey preparing for a gathering with the girls in her driveway um, because they haven't utilized that space of the house. FYI, I'm no longer a part of Cynthia and Mike's relationship. We broke up right at the beginning of COVID. I was just tired of being a third party, third wheel. You know, we'll discuss what was going on in our sex life later on in this episode. But I just had to focus on me and my family. I really want to be back here in St. Louis with my child. Um, during COVID, I really didn't want to be stuck in a house with Cynthia and Mike and his children and her daughter. Like, it's just too much. Like, me and Kyrie needed our own space. We need to be in our own sanctuary. You know, I got my new place and everything. And it just worked out for the best. You know, I wish them nothing but the best in all of their future endeavors, their marriage. But it was just time for me to separate myself and move on to a different relationship. You know, so please respect my privacy um, at this moment, you know, when I want to talk more about it, I will. So she says that, you know, she and Mike were tested during their four month quarantine in LA. And I was like, see, this is why I did not want to be bothered. This is why I left. So Candy arrives first and I hated Candy's first confessional look with her hair swooped over to the side with them curls. Her hair just looked dry. I didn't like the earrings. I didn't like the color of the dress. It, her boobs look great. I didn't like the makeup. I didn't like none of it. I hated it. The second confessional look, you can tell she got somebody else to do her hair because that hairstyle was popping. I love the swoop. I love the half up, half down with the flips. Love the outfit, makeup. Everything was on point. It was current, up to date. That first outfit was so outdated. Did not like it at all. Um... So Marlo arrives next and she arrives taking folks temperatures and measuring six feet, doing the most, but it was a much needed kick in the laugh. Cynthia Titty keep on popping out, child. I was like, okay, Lanithia. <laughs> they discuss having big nipples and how they don't like it. What's so funny about this is that me and my best friend just went through this a few months ago when those nude photos of Cardi B leaked. Um, and my friend was like, why her nipples so big? This gotta be some roller. I was like, lotion, like bitches got big nipples. And I FaceTimed her and showed her my nipples. She was like, oh my God, like what the fuck? <laughs> Y'all know I got big titties. My nipples is literally like this big. The areola part is like this big. She was like, what the fuck? And her nigga was like, yeah, like bitches out here got big areolas. Like what the fuck? That shit just tickled me. Um, so, uh, they all say how proud they are of Portia and all the work that she's doing. Marlo then asked how Kenya is, and I was very shocked by that. I'm like, why are you asking about Kenya? You've hated her all these seasons. What? Because Nene ain't back. Now you can act like you act like her. So, Cynthia says that she tried reaching out a couple of times to Kenya, but she sounded really down. And Candy says she hadn't talked to her in a month. So, Cynthia FaceTimes her, and Kenya answered the phone, but she was like, they got a poor connection or whatever. She really couldn't hear and she hung up the phone. Now, I don't know if she did that on purpose or did they really have a connection, but we then see her get into her Bentley and she leaves. And in the car, her friend, her bestie, Brandon, calls her. And Kenya says, you know, during COVID, it's really been stressful for her. She felt like she was locked up in jail. She's gained 30 pounds. And you can really see the weight gain all in her face. Her face was very chubby and bloated. Her skin even looked dry and brittle like it was her first couple of seasons. And her, see her face had got a lot better over the last couple seasons. You could tell she was going through it. Like, you can just tell that she was depressed and going through, you know, all of her issues with this marriage and then COVID and being at home with that baby by herself. You could tell mama was going through it. 
So she's headed to see her lawyer. Uh, Kenya tells Brandon, the last time I was in New York, I just felt defeated. She says that Mark walked in and didn't greet me in any kind of loving way. He just went straight to Brooklyn. I said, what's on your agenda tomorrow? And then he just snapped at me and said, I have to work Kenya. I know it's a trying time for him, but I'm tired of making excuses for him. And she, you know, cries or whatever. And it's sad to see this from Kenya, but we went through this last season with her. Kenya keeps on attracting emotionally and even sometimes physically abusive men into her life because she has no self-worth when it comes to love. Now, I don't know if this dates back to the situation with her mother, but I feel like she wanted the ring and the baby so bad that she rushed and married somebody without really truly getting to know him. And now this is the effect of rushing to get married just so you know, she could say, I got a ring and I got a baby and whatever. She didn't take the time to really get to know this man. He didn't probably take the time to get to know her. And it's just a mess. Um, And she is a very weak person when it comes to relationships. And I've seen this with a lot of women, even myself in the past, where I'm so dominant and strong in my career, but in my relationships in the past, I would be very weak because I wanted it so bad that I would dumb myself down and accept shit that I knew I didn't deserve just to have somebody in my life. But once she gets to that stage where I'm at now, where I know that I'm the prize and I know I'm this shit and I know that anybody that comes into my space has to be deserving of me girl she wouldn't even bat her eyes to deal with him and his foolishness but she hasn't gotten there yet so um Kenya says I'm tired of being sad and she gets lost on the way to the to the lawyer's office and ain't nothing worse than when your life already in shambles and just, everything is just in disarray. So she gets there and um, I don't know how I feel about Kenya's confessional look with the braids. It was she was trying to give us an African look. It was just something about it that just seemed disjointed. She's a you know of course a beautiful girl, but I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. What y'all think about it? Um, I feel like Monique does a better job at the, you know, the braids and all of that stuff. So, uh, she tells her lawyer that, you know, her and Mark have been separated at this point for 10 months. Kenya says, it's not something I initially wanted. We had a big fight. And then he said, I'm going to announce we're separating tomorrow. Since then we were doing really well. And then COVID happened and it affected his businesses and we were apart. I feel like I'm the first person to take the brunt of everything that's going on with him. And a lawyer asks her, what does the brunt mean? And Kenya says insults, you know, him being angry. I just was walking around on eggshells, but I'm not that girl. You know, I know how to communicate very well, but with him, it started to feel like abuse and <laughs> it is mental abuse. Like he is mentally abusing you and you allow him to do it. And he fully knows that he is in control of their relationship. You know, the saying, the one who loves least controls the relationship. And that's exactly what's going on in this. He knows that she's weak and he knows that she's going to put up with his shit so um she says uh that there's no prenup that she purchased the car during their marriage and that she gave it to him ain't no motherfucking way i'm gonna gift your ass a car bitch and you think you gonna talk to me crazy get back my shit get back my shit before i punch you in your motherfucking dick you got like fucked up girl can you if you don't get it together bitch so the lawyer says you know my concern is you know, child custody. Does he spend time, any time with Brooklyn by himself? And she was like, no, even when we go up there to see him, he comes to the hotel with us. And I'm like, why was you staying in the hotel? Why wouldn't you stay at his house? Y'all married? Like, or is it because y'all not on good terms? Like, what is that about? So the producer asked her in her confessional, what is Mark's relationship like with his other children? She was like, child, that's a loaded question. I ain't gonna even answer that. And I'm like, okay, Summer Walker, like you knew prior to having a baby with him that his relationship with his other children were contentious. Uh, Ma'am, would you, did you think about my daughter might end up in the same predicament as his other kids. Like, I don't know what in the hell you bitches be thinking. I don't know why y'all think y'all pussy or your looks or whatever you got going to make you so different from them the rest. I'm not going to lay down and have no baby with no man that don't even have a good relationship with his other children. Obviously, it's for a reason. The fuck? Kenya, brighten the fuck up. So Kenya wants to have a custody issue settled with Mark before she actually makes a decision on whether or not to file. And I call bullshit with that. I felt like she was stalling because she still loves him. 
and she just wanted to prove a point. Like, I'm going to see a lawyer again to try to see if that'll get any, you know, uh, emotions out of him. But she wasn't ready. And well, I guess from what we see in the trailer, he going to pull the trigger on her ass and she going to feel stupid. So after the meeting with the lawyer, uh, the cameras catch her and her lawyer still having a conversation. And her lawyer tells her to stop being so self-deprecating. And Kiki was like, I'm not. And her lawyer was like, you literally beat yourself up because of this dude. I know how black women want, especially black women celebrities. Y'all give away everything for your career. Then you go and say, okay, I'm going to go get this family. But his failure is not your failure. It's his failure. You got to get your fight back, dog. And she was like, well, that's why I'm here. And I was like, girl, you better listen to that tough love he was giving your ass because that's the God's honest truth. I feel like Kenya reached that point in her life where everybody had kids and a family and a husband and she needed to prove not only to herself but to the world that somebody loved her enough or cared about her enough to marry her and she made a horrible decision because first you gotta love you enough so um Portia and Dennis go to Kentucky to protest for Breonna Taylor she admits that in the past she said ignorant things but that she wanted to educate herself on black history and I'm so happy that she's done the work Candy prepares for Mama Riley um and her new Jackson 5 nose <laughs> to head to college in New York. She's going to NYU. Um, and Candy says that she's going to be on a limited budget because paying for this school is very expensive. And Riley was like, you know, I feel like since my daddy ain't really did nothing else, he needs to help with school. Um, and she also told Candy that he she needs to file for back child support. So Candy was like, Block, who is uh, Riley's biological father, called me and said, you're acting like a broke bitch, this and that. And i never forget the same thing happened to me when, um, with Kyrie's dad, when he was little, he went the first six, seven years of Kyrie's life, he did not pay child support. And he hurt Kyrie's when he told Kyrie's that he was going to come visit him and he didn't show up. And Kyrie's boohoo cried like somebody had shot and killed him. I never seen my baby cry like that a day before his life. And it pissed me off so bad. I was like, you know what? The child support, um, people had already sent me out a letter saying that I could file um what was it felony child support uh charges against him i was like fuck that why am i not holding this man accountable and he got mad and was like what you he called me trying to cuss me out I was, what the fuck you doing this shit for do you act like you ain't good and this i'm like it ain't about the fact that i'm not doing well for myself it's a fact that you laid down and had a baby with me nigga and I shouldn't be the sole person that's having to take care of things. You need to help, motherfucker. The fuck is wrong with you, bitch? Girl, so I understood exactly where Candy was coming um, from with this part of her storyline this season because I am literally in the same situation when it comes to Kyrie's and his deadbeat ass daddy. So, um... Candy in her confessional says he owes me almost $100,000 and she was like, the courts are going to make him pay a portion of what he owes. I mean, he's riding around in Bentley's, but you don't want to pay this amount of money. And I was like, girl, you are speaking my life because the same shit was happening with me. And like I said, and Kyrie's daddy, you know, he was out here, you know, big time dope dealer and, you know in the high roller room and the casinos and shit, but couldn't pay a couple hundred dollars a month in child support. Girl, bye. So, and I was like, now you see why your ass landed in the feds for eight years. So Candy asks, would she be willing to have a relationship with Block if he does pay, you know, his back child support. And Riley was like, when you are only the bum father to me, it just kind of rubs me the wrong way because you have the capability to be there because you can, I've seen it with your other children. I feel like I've moved past that point where he's necessary. And that's exactly where Kyrie is because Kyrie felt the same way. You know, he has a great relationship with his other children. He just decided for whatever reason not to be there for Kyrie. And Kyrie is like, nigga, like my mama done did your job plus hers. Like, there's really no need to have you in my life, especially when I know you're not going to be consistent. So I understood where Riley was coming from. And I also understood where Candy was coming from, because as a mom, you just want your child to feel loved from both parents. And you try, even though you know that other parent, it might be shitty, you still try to connect the dots and have that deadbeat parent step up to the plate and you just try to put your feelings to the side for them to have some type of relationship. But I'm saying Riley with this one. 
So Todd even steps in and says, you know, she's only going to get comfortable based off his actions. He has to genuinely try. And yeah. Uh, Candy in her confessional says, you know, he just thinks that she's supposed to welcome him with open arms and it didn't work out that way. And it's the same thing that happened over here. So Cynthia and Candy go to see Kenya at her home and she gives them, you know, shoe covers for their shoes because she wants to show them um, her project that she's working on. She's getting her entire backyard done. She has all of those acres in the back. So she's putting a jacuzzi and a pool and a play section for her daughter. And, um... Uh, uh, not an outhouse. Jesus, be a fence. A uh, second, a guest house in the back. Um, I know I just recently saw on her uh IG story that the pool and everything is almost done. So I think that that's a genius idea for her to do all that. That's just gonna um add value to the property if she ever decides to sell it. So she was talking about how Mark didn't even want a pool, but he don't live there no more. So she doing what the fuck she wanted to do. And I was like, I wouldn't give a fuck if that nigga didn't want a pool anyway. Nigga, this is my house. I paid for this motherfucker. So they go inside and Candy compliments Ken Kenya on how beautiful her house is and how clean it is. And she was talking about how, you know, during COVID, her house is just a wreck because her maid and everything isn't there helping her. And Kenya tells them about, you know, the trip to New York uh, two weeks prior and how Mark pick the fight with her and talk to her nasty and candy says you know he has all the power you are going up trying to see him even though he should be the one trying to come see you you're the one trying to figure out can we fix this and i was like exactly if you stop giving him the power to treat you like shit maybe you will see some different results as soon as you start treating them niggas like they ain't shit they start kissing your ass i'm telling you it works every time stop calling the nigga start fucking somebody else Go MIA on that motherfucker. Fuck you, nigga. Get nigga be all up on your ass. Or he just may not. And you just need to move the fuck on. So King says, that is indicative of our entire relationship. When I came back, I went to see my attorney. He gave me two options to file for separation or divorce. And Candy said, it just seems like it's his way or the highway. Cynthia says, so he doesn't see anything wrong with the way he treats you, basically. And King was like, I don't think he does. Candy, her confessional said, girl, cut the ties and move on. I'm taking Candy with that one. Cynthia says, I feel like you gave this all that you could give it. Like, girl, just throw in the towel. But it's obvious by the look on Kenya's face that she was not ready. If y'all watched this a week's episode of uh, Behind the Scenes, he, I sh literally just talked about Kenya and Mark this weekend. It seemed like they're doing better. Hopefully they continue on, but if this is her second chance that she's giving him, let it be the last bitch. So Cynthia and Mike are at home drinking wine and they're talking about, you know, how I was doing quarantine. And Mike says, you know what I'm happy about the most? You're able to just let it go. And she was like, oh, you know, you know, me just trying to be quiet and stuff. We was fucking. He was like, yeah. He was like, uh, you know, when your head was under the pillow, when you were sounding like a car about to start up. And he was like, eee, eee. Y'all, when I tell y'all, I got so sick of this bitch sound like a dolphin every time we was fucking like, I was like, Cynthia, bitch, watch some porn, huh, bitch, and learn how to moan when a nigga is hitting it, girl. I couldn't deal with that shit. I was like, see, this is, this is where I got to leave. I just could not. So Cynthia was like, I was trying to be quiet. Bitch, you wasn't. So they didn't discuss the wedding. And Cynthia learned that there can't be any more than 50 people at, you know, a large gathering. But they have 250 people coming to the wedding. He's cool with it. He don't care that if it's just 50 people. Cynthia was like, I don't have a good memory of my last wedding, you know, because of the financial stuff. And then it was some people there that were haters. You're like my happily ever after. I just want an amazing day. And I get what she's saying. You know, the last, her first wedding was a shit show. Even though fashion-wise... She kicked ass in that first wedding. The second wedding, I had a lot of issues with, but we'll talk about that when the time comes. So she then suggests they move the date if they can't have all their guests there. And he gets upset and suggests they still get married, but then have the wedding later. And I'm like, exactly. So Cynthia was like, I want it all though. And Mike was like, am I not enough? And she was like, yeah, you are. He was like, I don't give a fuck about that wedding. You got to ask yourself, do you want a marriage or a wedding? And I was like, catch okay kenya okay bitch because you can still get married to this man on that day and then have the big celebration later but i think 
Cynthia was pressing for this big wedding because that was a part of her storyline. If she knew that she didn't do that, what storyline would she have? And then this may be her last season if she ends up moving to LA to be with him. So I think that she wanted to go out with a bang, but fuck that. If I really love you and you're the love of my life, I'm going to marry you anyway and we can just do the do later on. But I think that Cynthia was so hyped up of catching everything on camera for the show. Um, and I think she needs to get her priorities together because it ain't that deep, bitch. So uh, in Kentucky, cops come and start arresting protesters, including Portia, Candy, Todd, and Don Juan are at the new steakhouse restaurant that's currently open. They're in business. And she said that, you know, they're getting out the kinks of everything and that business is doing well. Cynthia calls Candy and asks if she see Portia got arrested. And she was like, yeah. And they both once again say how proud they are of her and that they're worried about her. Um, we see after 13 hours of being in custody, Portia is released along with Breonna Taylor's mom. The producer asks her in her confessional, what's the biggest takeaway from all this? And Portia was like, I'm going to do it again. And I was like, bitch, you better. Um, overall, I give the season premiere of Real Housewives of Atlanta. A B plus. It was cute for what it was. You know, I love the fact that they touched on Black Lives Matter and COVID so much. I got, I'm happy we got to see the evolution of Portia. Sad to see Kenya in the same space that she's in. Still see Candy out here doing big things, being that bitch that she is. Cynthia's acting like an idiot with this wedding. Um, I know that via the Peach Report uh, on Instagram, I was, we're already been informed that the first couple of episodes is going to be kind of slow, but then it's going to pick up as soon as they go on their first cash trip. And that's when shit go, go left. And I cannot wait. Love you guys so much. Thank you for watching this video. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like and subscribe and hit that notification bell button. I love you guys so much and I will see you on the next video.